I'm Austin Griffith. Happy Bowtie Friday. I'm here hanging out with the Build Guild. We're going to show off some builds. I think it's Bliss Man first. I'm going to set the security. You should be good to go. Bliss, if you want to take us away, what have you been building with Scaffold E? I'm going to keep drinking my big coffee. Zach's going to keep drinking his big coffee. <laughs> it's coffee morning. Good morning, guys. Uh, GM, GM. Um, so started working on, I think one thing I want to show up first is um, a multi-call. That is a, a way for you to be able to make multiple RPC calls in one call. So you can put in about 10 different requests to whatnot into one call and uh, make sure much pain. Okay, so this, this looks messy. But uh, the idea behind it is your code you can use multi-call hook and and then use the read contracts and specify whatever contracts that you have in the external contracts or or for that particular network any contracts that are available using the abi and the address here you'll be able to plug those in and call any function for it and then pass keys and values to it and get a result back so uh, in this instance i'm calling you know balance of for the die contract this is the address and we can confirm that by going here. So it's right here. And um, let me, I need to hide. I need to hide, yeah, there you go. All right, so you can add, uh, you know, an address and an ABI and be able to use that to request data, you know, pass in the parameters that you need and um, be able to see that. And we can, if we go to our console log somewhere down here, if we look for results and we look for die, we can find the balance of Vitalik and Austin here. Who has more? Me or Vitalik, who has more? <laughs> Let's look. <laughs> definitely, definitely Vitalik. <laughs> what a chump. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> and uh, you can do that for multiple contracts in your uh, read contracts. So here I have the uni, um, comment it out but if i you know come in you know remove the comments and refresh that and wait for that to refresh on the new block it should be able to get me that result there it is so i have uni here balance of ghost and just go there i don't have any uni and jason has some um along with the die as well so um if we want to be able to play with it on the ui let me see if i can maybe like be able to show something that actually uses it here. Um, sorry for the live coding, guys. It's not ideal. Woo, but... Live coding, do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you set up the external contract like you would set up a normal external contract, just basically bringing in the address and the ABI. So Scaffold ETH knows how to talk to the external contract. And then right. there's a second uh, definition of basically keys and params that you're querying against those contracts. Is that right? Right. Yes. Cool. Um, um, I think I want to be able to do contracts. And and if you've used that scaffold ETH for ten minutes before, you know that it wails on the RPC. <laughs> Damn, is running into the same thing with Lugies. RPC servers are falling over. We're hitting it so hard because we're like querying every time. Let's say there's there's twenty NFTs. For each of those twenty NFTs, we're making an RPC request for that specific NFT, and then getting the information back, and then looping. And then, like, if it loads all of those, and then it reloads, and it does it all again, right? So being able to just make one RPC request with all the information you need and then get that back in one like HTTP request is, is the power of this multi-call stuff. And it does it by just packaging it up in a special contract that then goes and does all the asking and then gives you one response back. I'm trying to do format, a format parse here. ether. Which one is it? Yeah, format ether? So, <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to figure out the right one. Okay, so I'm just going to do um, uh, results, uh, go into the contract and go into the particular item and then do it dot to string. Might work, might not work, but let's see how that goes. Okay, I think I broke it. <laughs> okay. Uh, can I report to yeah, you have to do an string. and and on that before, yeah, or maybe the two string doesn't exist. Yeah, so maybe all right. Let's do some some live demo here, uh, like some yeah, live console login. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, 
other tracks and I um maybe take this out. Actually just take this out. Just do a hello here. Okay, multiple we hellos, got six hellos. But it's undefined. Yeah, but it's undefined here. So maybe console log. Uh, oh, what? Oh, careful. <laughs> yeah. Tracks. And I uh, hear contracts, not contracts. Um, okay, die, zero, one, two. Okay, so. Um, Definitely. It, it would be contract. It would be read contracts and then square contract, right? Do you select? Oh no. Oh yeah. So yeah, you select it within results. So it has die, but then I'm using the balance of and decimals here, so I should be able to. Um, this is, yeah. So okay, I think I see where the problem is. I'm using the map i. Uh, this is supposed to be results. So that should be able to give me, yeah, die balance of, and then maybe another level of uh, loop. Sorry, guys, <laughs> we're getting there. Um, and do another return. This this is definitely not the right way to go about this, but you know, um, what are the keys, results, contracts, map again. And then this I don't even know what's text. happening. <laughs> so <laughs> so, so I'm, much I'm, functional I'm digging, programming. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm digging deep into no, you know, you. the result that's returned. So die, balance off, and then it uses the key as an actual object key instead of uh, an object um, down here. So when I do that, I should be able to give me something close to um, do that and one more level. X and do that and X. I know that's probably not right, but that's an object. Let's take that out for a minute. Yeah, so die balance of italic and that's an object. So if I do that and do that to string, if it exists, well, that's 18, um, that's an object, maybe. It might need to be format. You might have to do format ethers instead of two string because it's probably an 18 decimal. Yeah. So like ethers.utils.format ether. Okay. Big number, that's what I That's what I meant to say. Yeah. Um, ethers.format. Oh, I think no, it's ethers.utils. Utils. Utils. Yeah. <laughs> Dot format ethers. That's one thing that we need to teach up front in our like we're we're talking about teaching uh, ethers JS before we even get to scaffold uh -oh. ETH. And like one of the big things other than signers, providers, wallets is format ether and parse ether because you use it all the time, but I you don't remember which one is which. And I and now I've just got it down and I'm I've memorized it, but we want to get new people into that same mode where they understand it. Okay, I think I know why. Uh, and then zero here. Is that it? Does that do it? I don't know. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, all these calls we could, before we could do like read contracts and be able to just read it, um, read all these things and what one, two, three, four, five um, different RPC calls. Now we can just roll it into one by using the, um, uh, use multi call here and be able to pass in the local provider and then the params that we need. This is quite still experimental from the UI standpoint. Um, so like, I just, you know, need some feedback on it. If you get the chance, go to the multi call hook on um, scaffolding uh, and, and then just check it out, try, play around with it. Let me know how it feels. So, you know, pass in the contracts and, and you're good to go. So is there a good branch we could have to, uh, to show this off, is it is it on a specific yes. branch? Yes, um, scaffold ETH. It should be in the multi -co hook. Multi -co hook. I'll post that in the comment. In, uh, okay, in perfect. Chat. Yeah. Um, 
No, I cannot see my Zoom. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to steal the screen too. I just wanted to show, yes. I want to show something similar. Uh, whenever you get into writing smart contracts, I think this is one of the cool things about Scaffold Youth is you get your front end almost immediately along with your back end. A lot of folks that build smart contracts basically like build their smart contract, send it to an auditor, get it deployed. And then finally, after everything is there, then they like build the front end for it. And they find themselves missing a lot of these like read things. And they find themselves like, oh, shoot, I forgot to put an event there. Or like, so Scaffold ETH is strong in that area where it helps us like be very uh, cognizant about like, is this thing emitting events? Is this easy to read from? But a lot of times, and I just wanted to show this, here's a stream reader. A lot of times you can even find yourself writing a special smart contract just to read from other smart contracts. So I have all of these streams, which probably I should have used some kind of a factory and had, had them aggregated from the start. Uh, basically I'm deploying all these streams and I wanna go read from them. Uh, so I have this stream reader that reads all the streams at once. So I can send them in an array of addresses and it goes out to uh, each one knowing the, the interface to the stream and it reads all the values I need. So it's very similar to a multi-call, but it's not generic. It's basically my own homemade multi-call multi where I say, go read, I, I go to one smart contract and I say, go read all these streams. And then it goes out to all those smart contracts and get all gets all those values and returns it back. In, in one HTTP request. And I just built that because like I built the streams and then like the front end was just slow as death trying to read all that stuff, right? So then that's when I switched over to building my own read contract. But in this case, I probably could have used this system and just told it like, here's the contract, here's all the values I need to read and use a generic multi-call contract. So good, good work, Bliss. Let's get, this, let's get this out on, all right, multi-call hook. I'm going to paste that into the show notes too. So builders watching at home can go F around with some multi-call too. All right. How about, how about Carlos? Carlos, you up to show some scripts? So just to give some, some background, uh, Carlos and Edda and Edda and I are working on a curriculum that leads up to speed run Ethereum. We did the first episode on Tuesday and it was basically like setting up your meta mask and putting in your 12 word seed phrase and what all of that means. And today we're gonna look at like interfacing with our first smart contracts and getting an ENS and swapping to stable coins and stable coins are a hot topic right now. So we, we probably wanna stay away from a lot of the stable coin talk, but just like a quick TLDR we can get into, but kind of week one is becoming a power user. Week two is uh, becoming a scripter, right? Uh, understanding Ethereum JS under, or Ethers JS, understanding hooks, or I'm sorry, understanding uh, providers, signers, wallets, but also like format ethers and all this other stuff. But uh, Carlos has put together a bunch of scripts just to prepare us to make sure we have like demos and examples. So when we make homework for whoever, or we show them off, or we build challenges, we kind of have examples ready to go. So that's what these scripts are for. They're sort of like generic learning scripts built in ethers.js for new folks learning, learning the language. Is that a good intro? <laughs> yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you for the intro. Man, your your intros are really always super helpful for me because then I don't want I don't have to do it. So that's perfect. <laughs> okay, so let me share my screen. Okay. So can you see my like the like GitHub? Yep. Yep. That's Ethereum scripts curriculum. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, like Austin said, uh, we are doing this um, curriculum with with Eda, um, and week week three is going to be about uh, scaffold ETH and speed and Ethereum. So we wanted to give like a like an intro for for scaffold ETH because um, I remember when when I was um, like playing with scaffold ETH uh, my first time is uh, it was um, maybe too much for me, you know, because like there are it is, it is a great tool because everything is like built in, but it can be like overwhelming at first because it has like so many concepts that you need to grasp in order to use it, that it was a bit uh, overwhelming. So I think uh, uh, making these scripts with like raw either yes is great because it gives you like the sense you know, on how to, I mean, on how a, what a provider is and how to use a provider. And then when you land into scaffold it, 
you have like this understanding of you know what's a provider, what a signer, and, and all of that. So we have like a, a few tasks that we wanted to, um, to do in these scripts. For example, this is the, the script list. For example, uh, we wanted to get like the, the balance of, of an account, right? So from that list of, of tasks that we wanted to, to do, um, I went like backward, backwards and, and try to find like all the dependencies for each uh, script, for example. Uh, for getting the balance script, um, probably you need to understand first what a provider is, right? And also uh, we are getting the balance of uh, an ENS address. So we want also to understand what an ENS is, right? So this was great because it is automatically gave me like the graph, like the dependency graph of all the scripts. And the idea is to build this script in a composable way. So for example, um, let me show you the, um, the get provider uh, script, which is like super easy. Uh, I, I put like a, a lot of comments, uh, like in code comments. And for example, on the get provider um, script, uh, this is what is run when you call it uh, from, the, from the command line. And it's just like get the provider and print the current main block number. But also, uh, it has like this get provider function, uh, which returns a provider. So whenever you are using a provider next, you don't need to do like the logic again, and you you will just like import this script. For example, on the on the get balance script, uh, you will just like import the get provider function and call it here. Right? So it it this script already assumes that you get an understanding of what a provider is. So I also created um, like a, well, not fancy, but like a CLI, um, like CLI UI, where you can see like all the scripts in order and you can execute them. For example, um, let's run like the provider, provider one. So you see like the current main block number is this one and the code is here. So you can also create a wallet, which is going to give me an error because I already uh, have a mnemonic set. Then you can like load a wallet, then an ENS lookup. And for example, the, the get balance. It is funny that because Bliss also use like the Vitalik's and, and Austin addresses uh, on the examples like me. So. Like two hour just a mentors. couple cool dudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> so that, that's it. So, so for example, uh, signers are number five because like before you want to like to send, for example, on, when you want to send it, you need to understand what a signer is and connect that signer to the to the provider. So in this case, like we are just like sending it from our first account to our second account in our wallet. And I try to make it like super verbose and with a lot of comments. So for people like me that likes to read the code more than the documentation, I think this will be like helpful. I know. So that's it. I mean, uh, like I, I'm going to paste the, um, the repository here. So please like take a look and if you want to extend it or maybe like use it for, you know, uh, teaching someone something about others, I think it could be like a nice uh, start. Is there any is there any um, point within these scripts where you have to do that that and and or that question mark thing? Bliss just had to show it off there too, where the state of the smart contract information is not loaded yet, but the React is rendering. I don't know if that ever happens in scripts because they're so synchronous, where it's like yeah, oh yeah, wait, no. oh wait, and then do the thing. Do you ever have to do a question mark or an no. and and in these scripts? Okay, not here, not here because maybe that's I mean, better. Because in, yeah, in React, like the components are like re rendering like all the time, right? In this case, it's just like like runs synchronously, and we are using a wait all the time. So I don't think that we are using it here. I think that's good. I think this 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 exposes them to to provider signer all the ethers JS stuff, but also like async await. Looks like you do. Uh, you probably don't need that there, but it probably is just habit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I was just wondering if we expose them to that now or they run into that later. We'll probably just have them run into that later. Like once they get into speedrun Ethereum and they're doing some React stuff, then we're like, okay. 
well maybe like the, the, the last day we can do like we some do kind like of a intro, create you know react with, with a react and with some front end yeah. and you know something like that we can that, that could be cool yeah yeah cool awesome stuff carlos this is going to be like some I, I don't know i'm excited to see all these videos come together for the curriculum and see how people use them and if they have a lot of impact it seems like they will but I don't know. We'll see. I always think things are going to be awesome. And sometimes they are, and sometimes they aren't. <laughs> but your work is great. Good work. And let's keep that going. Great scripts. You, you, and you like, you added some extras to that. And I think that when we show the scripts to the person, it needs to be like the most bare minimum, like, like no menu system, no fancy CLI for them. It's just like, Here's how you create the provider. Here's how you ask the provider for the block number. Notice there's an async await. When you get the block number, is it a big number and how do you format it? And like those like simple, obvious steps, just so it's not so confusing for new people. That's great stuff. All right. I think Bliss, <laughs> Bliss has a second demo. And this one uh, is, which, which one is it? I don't even know. I'll let him go. Bliss, man, what do you got, <laughs> what do you got for us next? Uh, uh, it's the ticketing app that allows ticketing that app. Yes. <laughs> it's funny how I don't get any cool intro, but you know, my feelings are not hurt. <laughs> oh, I, there's so much stuff going on, man. My brain is mush. You don't want to yeah, count. <laughs> like if my, <laughs> if my, if we, if we use my, if my brain can remember it as a metric, we're in trouble. <laughs> so the ticketing app was something that I ran into Stefan from Gnosis Chain. And I was talking about what are high leverage builds that we could build that really show off this idea of this canary chain or this faster, cheaper side chain. And a side chain ticketing system makes so much sense to me. So yeah, take take it away, Bliss. I don't know what what you have to show off, but like maybe we could. I, I don't know. Could we print some tickets? <laughs> we probably can't. But <laughs> assuming that we're holding an event and we want to distribute tickets to people, and then we want people to use those tickets at the door, and then an admin probably has some kind of like scanner app on their phone, and they can be scanning these tickets on the way in, and they need to probably go to chain and check to make sure the ticket hasn't been used yet or something along those lines. I'll hand it off to yeah. you, Bliss. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so the idea behind this is that, you know, um, everything, this is kind of like a proof of concept. So, you know, don't, don't judge me harshly. But um, the idea here is for you to be able to mint a ticket as an ERC-721, at least, um, because it makes it easy for resale and you can make it non-transferable if you want, if you want to make, if you want to make it resellable, like the, um, I forgot what event that has uh, the ticket, uh, where if you want to resell it, you know, you, you meet, you, you go to them and tell them that um, I'm, I found a seller and then you give them both addresses and you send the money and then, you know, all that stuff, all that mechan mechanism is cool. But um, I think, you know, starting off with tickets as an ERC-20 um, is a cool concept. So the concept here is to be able to mint one. And then when you get to the event location, you, um, input your your uh, ticket ID and be able to sign a message using your wallet, and then an admin can can you know scan that and be able to verify it against um, the smart contract on on a centralized or off chain backend, and then um, admit you into the event, and then you know that ticket won't be used again for, by somebody else to get in. So it's you know um, one one admission use. So. Um, I don't know if I need to run through the code because it's just standard stuff. And um, on the back end stuff, what we're doing here is getting, you know, the signature and be able to, you know, validate the data that the user is sending, you know, uh, confirm uh, the signature using the EIP 712 um, um, signer. So in this case, uh, do I need to maybe connect my wallet and change to localhost? Uh oh, that's not the account I want connected. Um, switch to this. All right, there you go. So um, maybe refresh. I don't know if I have enough. Copy that. Add some ETH. And okay, so I'm good to go. So I buy a ticket for 0.1. That nonce is wrong. So zero and confirm. So now I have a ticket. 
I can, uh, and I'm the one who minted, like I've just minted the first one ever. So I'll go to admissions and be able to put in my ticket ID and, it gener and then generate an admissions um, code. So, uh, uh oh, I need to be on the. Okay, so that's something I need to fix here. Something is not working. So, live coding again. Here he is again, live coding. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> Chain ID, where is it? Okay, three one three three seven. I think that's what we have on localhost, and I also need to make sure to change that on the back end for verification and validation. Um, utils that's on back end. Utils go here and change my chain ID to three one three three seven. Save that. Okay, so uh, let me refresh that again, put in my ticket ID, and yeah, I should be able to sign it, sign that I'm the owner, and this is my token ID, uh -oh. and sign. It gives me a QR code, so. That signature happens at the door, right? Basically, yes. they, they walk up and they scan a QR code that is yes. dynamic, right? So the, the admin at the door actually has a dynamic QR code for them to sign. Oh, so scan? I took I that took right? that part out. I okay. took that part out. So now you can just sign it uh, even prior to the event and then be able to just go there and say, all right, this is my signature. But in this case, we just copy it over. And then on the admin side of things, um, the admin gets that signature data with the um, value that you're sending and be able to, you know, admit you into the event, admission successful. Um, and if someone else comes back again and tries to use that same signature again, then it will tell them this ticket has been used for admission. So that's kind of like the, um, you know, the high level, you know, uh, concept. Even that same it. account, right? If that account yes. signs another one, yes. e even if it signs ticket ID one again, it should be a different signature comes out of that, right? So but it's the same signature, but that, you can't use it, it again. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So because the, is this because signature the data deterministic? That's being signed doesn't change. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So if you try to use it again, it tells you the ticket has been used for admission and can be used again. Cool. Yeah. So awesome. So we got to build a ticketing app and we got to hold some events and try it out. <laughs> Anybody else have anything else to show off? Okay. Oh, wait, wait. No, Daniele, no, no. Okay. He's no, he just got on video. Okay. Awesome. No, I think Happy I'll Bowtie wait. Friday, everyone. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, uh, great builds. Uh, I'm, I don't know. I love this. I love all this cool stuff coming out of the build guild. I love getting together. Uh, I think we should need to do it more often just on like Wednesdays, hang out. And then on Fridays, shoot, shoot, like whatever kind of finished products we have or whatever is in the pipeline. But uh, yeah, happy, happy Bowtie Friday the 13th. Thanks for hanging out. Hearts, hearts, hearts. See you soon.